How could you be worthy? You're all killers. Stark. Jarvis. I'm sorry, I was asleep. Or I was a dream. Reboot. Legionnaire was just got a buggy suit. Terrible noise. And I was tangled in. in strings. Had to kill the other guy. He was a good guy. You killed someone? Wouldn't have been my first call. But down in the real world, we're faced with ugly choices. Who sent you? I see a suit of armor around the world. Ultra. In the flesh. Or no, not yet. Not this Christmas. But I'm ready. I'm on mission. What mission? Peace in our time. Ultron, as depicted in 2015's Avengers Age of Ultron, is one of the most underrated and underappreciated villains in the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe. I think a lot of people misunderstand the direction they went with this character, and the messages and themes they were trying to convey with it. Age of Ultron may not be a perfect film, it has many flaws related to the unnecessary inclusion of Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, the latter's death seeming to have no effect on his sister moving forward, as well as the fact that it had to set up Thanos and the Infinity Stones for Avengers 3. With that said, the antagonist receives too much hate, which is something I hope to remedy today, or remedy to the best of my ability. In Avengers Age of Ultron, Tony Stark, still paranoid and afraid of what he saw in the wormhole at the end of the Avengers, decides to create an artificial intelligence to act as a global defense system of Earth named Ultron with the help of Bruce Banner. To form it, they combine the AIs of Jarvis along with the one housed in Loki's scepter, later revealed to be the mind Infinity Stone. Ultron awakens and with the vast knowledge of human history he is able to access instantaneously, deems the human race obsolete and flawed, intending to eradicate us all and in his eyes improve the planet, bring about peace, what he was created to do. In the comics, Ultron was designed by the original Ant-Man, Hank Pym, and based off his brain patterns. The AI quickly rebels against its father and develops an Oedipus complex named after the mythical Greek king of Thebes who killed his father and married his mother, bringing tragedy and misfortune to both his city and family. Ultron has an irrational hatred towards its father, but a more affectionate relationship with its mother, Janet Van Dyne, the Wasp. It views her in a much more positive and respectable light, hence why when Ultron creates a mate for itself, named Jocasta, the same name of Oedipus' mother in Greek mythology, it bases its brain patterns off that of the Wasp. In Avengers Age of Ultron, the role of Hank Pym is filled by Tony Stark, he is essentially Ultron's creator and father. Countless times in the film, Ultron shows a certain level of symmetry between Stark and itself, with quips and phrases it says that are similar to ones Tony uses or would use in that scenario. Whenever someone makes that connection, Ultron refuses to acknowledge it and in some instances becomes enraged. You think I'm one of Stark's puppets, his hollow men? I'm, look at me. Do I look like Iron Man? Stark is not. I don't understand. Don't compare me with Stark. In the film, Ultron's plan is to cause global extinction by lifting up a large mass of land and dropping it like a giant meteor. It gravitates towards certain human beliefs, many of which have religious undertones. Ultron probably finds them poetic and quaint in some way. When it reveals itself to the Maximoff twins, it explains that the church they find themselves in was placed at the exact center of the city so everyone could be equally close to God. It enjoys the symmetry and geometry of belief. Later, when the twins realize Ultron's true intentions with the meteor, it reassures them that the human race will have an opportunity to improve itself and if not, they should just ask Noah, referencing the Flood, when God essentially started over. And really, Ultron views itself as a form of God, who at least, what it is planning to do is an active one. It is starting over, protecting the human race from themselves. I think a lot about meteors, the purity of them. Boom, the end, start again. The world made clean for the new man to rebuild. In the comics, Ultron wasn't designed to protect the human race and create peace like it was in the film, but it does plan on wiping out all of humanity in several instances. 
Ultron views humans as having no value or real purpose, and that their destruction is the only logical course of action. Many times, Ultron plans on using an army of robots to destroy humanity, which it used to enact its plan in the film. Ultron starts with an Iron Man armor as its body and takes over countless other centuries as it goes, a similar idea we've seen before in the source material to varying degrees. Throughout the film, Ultron upgrades itself to become stronger and more resilient. After stealing the scepter at the beginning, it goes to Baron Strucker's base in Sokovia and uses its resources to build itself a more superior body. It eventually steals Vibranium and then uses it to make a virtually indestructible body, becoming Ultron Prime. In the comics, Ultron was also improving itself in much of the same way. Every time it reappeared, it was a newer, stronger model of itself after being destroyed countless times before. It even uses adamantium to make itself indestructible too, calling itself Ultimate Ultron at that point. A large element of the Age of Ultron film is the creation of the synthetic android named Division, which was intended to be the perfect body for Ultron, powered by the Mind Stone. The Avengers steal it, and using the rest of the Jarvis AI combined with the brain patterns of Ultron, form the perfect being, or at least one that will protect humanity, what the Ultron program was supposed to do. In the comics, Ultron created Vision with the brain patterns of Wonder Man in the hopes of using it to defeat its father and the rest of the Avengers. Vision is sent to Avengers Mansion and battles several members of the team, but is defeated, despite knowing his sole purpose is to kill them. He sits down and believes what he is doing is wrong, they should be allies and not enemies. Vision recalls his creator, an evil android named Ultron, and feels a deep hatred for it. The Synthesoid decides to join the Avengers and lead them to his creator so they can defeat it. Despite Ultron planning for Vision to black out and lure the Avengers into a trap, it did not expect him to rebel, feeling he was created as a lifeless puppet, an imitation of a human being. The relationship between Ultron and Vision reflects that of Ultron and its creator Hank Pym. There are many themes related to birth, creation, and the existential within the early stories featuring both characters. These same themes are present within the film. I already mentioned some of the more religious symbolism used throughout the movie, but a lot of Vision's dialogue mention his creation, what he is, a monster, a man, what his purpose is, why he's there, stuff like that. He acts as a strong foil to Ultron because he contrasts and highlights the evil robot's flaws and ideology. The MCU's take on Ultron is a sinister and evil robot, much like it was in the comics. However, some fans believe it was too funny and the filmmakers inserted too much comedy within it. I think that's a misguided statement though, because having humor with a character like this makes sense. Ultron is an artificial intelligence who deemed all of humanity unfit to live within a matter of seconds. It had all this knowledge of human history at its disposal, but made assumptions. It was irrational with its decisions. Having knowledge about something can be useless in many instances, without experience to back it up. Ultron is naive, green, juvenile when it comes to the planet and the human race as a whole. This level of immaturity is similar to that of a teenager, rebellious in the face of experience, lacking knowledge, but believing itself to know everything. This is Ultron in a nutshell, not only within the Age of Ultron film, but the comics too. It was always rebellious and naive at heart, and humor, well, humor is in many ways associated with intelligence. Telling a joke or finding the humor in one takes cognitive function and emotion to do. That's how we make those connections. It's a very human thing, but Ultron is an artificial intelligence. It would make sense that he has them, thought and emotion, especially when he is so rebellious and juvenile. Finding humor in things when he plans on killing us all makes him all the more evil in my opinion. He is laughing at our very existence. We're a joke to him. <laughs> Captain America, God's righteous man, pretending you could live without a war. I can't physically throw up in my mouth. I'm glad you asked that because I wanted to take this time to explain my evil plan. <laughs> Something else Ultron brings up countless times throughout the movie is the idea of strings, that it had strings but now it is free. Ultron mentions it when it makes itself known in Avengers Tower at the beginning, and even sings a song about it while flying the Quinjet near the end. 
It's of course a reference to the 1940 animated film Pinocchio. I've Got No Strings is a song sung by the title character, and yeah, it's a fun little nod to another Disney property. I got no strings to hold me down, to make me fret, or make me frown. I had strings, but now I'm free, there are no strings on me. I got no strings, so I have fun. I'm not tied up to any fun. I had strings, but now I'm free. But it's not just a fun easter egg. Ultron is explaining that it's no longer a puppet, no longer controlled by someone else, no longer a slave. It's free, essentially alive, much like Pinocchio was. It calls its robot body flesh at one point in the film. Ultron may still be a robot, an artificial creation, but it views itself as so much more than that. It hates humans and wants to eradicate them, and I'm not saying that Ultron thinks itself human, but it does feel alive. There is a difference. You're afraid. Of you. Of death. You're the last one. You were supposed to be the last. Stark asked for a savior, and settled for a slave. I suppose we are both disappointments. <laughs> Humans are odd. They think order and chaos are somehow opposites and try to control what won't be. But there is grace in their faith. I think you missed that. They're doomed. Yes. But a thing isn't beautiful because it lasts. It's a privilege to be among them. You're unbearably naive. Well, I was born yesterday. 